Hi, I'm Chris with Thrive Productions, and today we're changing tires. All right, so today we're going to be changing tires on a 2007 Kawasaki ZX6R. And what we want to do is go through some of the tools that you're going to need to complete that job successfully. So first, we're going to need a set of rubber gloves. Next, we're going to need a tire scraper. So this is going to help us scrape off the existing wheel weights. Then we need some tire lubrication. So this is Bead Buster. And what I've done here in the spray bottle is I've mixed this in a four to one solution, which is regular tap water. Next, we have just brake cleaner. So you can find this at you know, Farm Fleet or Fleet Farm or any type of a hardware store near you. Then we have our valve core remover. And then next, we've got a set of new valve cores. We've also got a set of wheel weights. These are just Motion Pro wheel weights. Then we have the yellow thing. So this, what this does is snaps onto the rim and helps hold the bead down as you're putting on the new tire so that it isn't constantly slipping on you. Then we've got a C-clamp, which is gonna help us break the bead. Okay, next we're gonna actually, in this particular instance, we're gonna install 90 degree valve stems. If you've ever had to check your air pressure on sport bike tires, especially on the front tire between the disc brakes, it's pretty hard to get in there. So these are gonna make that job a little bit easier. Then we've got rim shields from Motion Pro. So these are gonna help us protect the rim as we are prying on the tire with the tire irons. Next, we've got two sets of tire irons that we're gonna work with. The first set is Bead Pros from Motion Pro. So these have a tire spoon on one end and on the other end is actually tools to help you break the bead. And then we've also got some regular tire spoons from Dr. Rock. Okay, and everything that we've just gone through, I've gone ahead and linked below for you on Amazon. So you can go ahead and pick this stuff up so you don't have to search for it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually remove that valve core to let the air pressure out. So we're gonna take our valve core removal tool and go ahead and put that on the valve stem. All right, so now that we've got the air out of the tire, the next thing we need to do is start working on breaking that bead. So using the Motion Pro Bead Pros, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first insert this piece that has the tabs, and this is gonna go into between the rim and the tire. And then next, we're gonna use the second piece that has the center tab. What we need to do is work this around in a few different places to try and get that tire bead pushed down from the rim. Okay, so now that we've worked the bead busters around a little bit and we've actually broke this bead, you can actually pretty much just do it by hand now and you can work around the tire. And continue to break that bead. until you're all the way around. Now we need to go ahead and flip this tire over and do the same thing. Okay, so now that we've got the bead broke on both sides, we're gonna go ahead and use some of this Bead Buster lubricant that we watered down to spray around the tire. And what that's gonna do is help assist with getting this tire up over the rim with the tire spoons. Okay, so next we're gonna take our Motion Pro rim shields, snap that on the rim. And then now we're gonna take our tire spoons and slide those down in between the tire and the rim. Okay, so now that we've got the tire spoon between the tire and the rim, we're gonna go ahead and pry that up and over like that. We're gonna take our next Motion Pro rim shield and insert that. Get our next tire spoon in, pop it up and over. Now you should be able to take your first spoon out and this is where it's very helpful to have four of these because two just never seems to be enough. Okay, so once you've worked it a little bit, not even probably halfway around the rim, you'll be able to actually just grab it and pop it up and over. So now we can pull our rim shields out and now we need to work on the next side. Okay, so we're gonna try and get the other side of the bead off of this rim. So we're gonna take our rim shield insert it on the top, take our tire spoon, insert it on the other side, and just pull the tire up and over. 
And then now that it's more than halfway over, we can actually just pull the rim straight out. So that's it for the old tire. We can go ahead and set that aside. And now we're gonna work on getting the new tire on here. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and replace this valve stem with that 90 degree valve stem that we talked about. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we have our 90 degree valve stem installed. So now we are ready to go ahead and put the next tire on. So basically have our rim set down and then we're gonna go ahead and get the tire slid over. But in order to do that, we need to first lubricate the tire again with that bead lubricant. So again, as you're spraying this, you wanna use a towel to kind of help block some of the spray because you don't wanna to get too much inside of your tire. Another thing to make sure that you take note of is obviously the rotation of the tire and the rim. So we've got the chain side down, which means the rotating wheel is like that, and we've matched up our tire rotation as well. So I've already gone ahead and sprayed the other side. So if you're lucky, you can push this down. So that's the first side down. Now we need to go ahead and get the other side. You're not gonna be able to push this side down. So what we need to do here is actually use the tire irons again. So we're gonna go ahead and take our Motion Pro bead protectors, slide that in, get our tire iron in, and go ahead and just push that, that lip down. Once we've got it started. Okay, so now one of the things that you'll find is as you're working this around, it's gonna to continue to wanna to try and pop up. So we're gonna go ahead and use the yellow thing so we clip that down like that. And what this is gonna do is actually hold that bead down as we work around our tire now. Okay, so now that we have got the tire completely on the rim, um, saved you a little bit of trouble having to watch through that. Now, depending on the type of tire you have, sometimes that can be a very easy process and sometimes it can be a little more challenging. So. Could take anywhere from five minutes to half an hour depending on how hard it is to do the tire to get it back over the the rim now obviously the lubrication helps with that the downside of that is it does also cause the tire irons to slip a little bit so now that we've got it back on we can go ahead and remove our yellow thing again that just kind of helps hold that bead down so you're not constantly fighting as the bead is popping back up so now we need to go ahead and reinstall our valve core or put in a new one um, depending on how old your tire is it doesn't hurt to always put in a new one um, so we're going to go ahead and use our valve core remover and go ahead and put that back in. Okay, so we've got that in, installed. Now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and inflate this tire and pop the two beads. So we're going to go ahead and, and go up to the garage and use the air compressor and pop the beads. All right, so now we're in the garage and we need to get some air in here to pop the tire onto the rim. Set the beads. So we're going to go ahead and inflate. Now this could take anywhere from 20 to 40 PSI, depending on how difficult the tire wants to be, but you will hear two audible pops when the beads set. Now that we've got the bead seated on the tire and we've got air pressure in here, now we're gonna move on to the next stage, which is balancing the tire. So we're gonna run through the tools you need in order to do that. So obviously we've got our tire. We need a scraper and a towel along with our brake clean to clean off, to scrape off the old wheel weights and then clean that rim to attach the new ones. We need some painter's tape to attach our wheel weights temporarily until we figure out exactly how much weight we need. And then this is actually my balancer and this is the Mark Parnes balancer, which is M-A-R-C-P-A-R-N-E-S.com. And basically it's a, sh a shaft that goes through with the cones to center it on the wheel. And then we've got two bearings that go on the end that'll set on the jack stand and allow us to balance that tire. So in order to do that again, we basically need to get our balancer set up and we'll put, go ahead and put the tire on the balancer. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get our balancer set up on this tire so that we can throw it on the jack stands and balance it. So we need our shaft and our two cones. So we're gonna go ahead and insert the shaft through the tire and then set our two cones. Kind of center that and then tighten those little wing nuts. Now that we've got that, we can go ahead and move over towards our jack stands. We'll need our two wheel bearings. Set those on. Okay, now that we've got our balancer set up on our tire, we're gonna go ahead and get that set on the jack stands. I've gone ahead and turned the assembly sideways so that you guys can kind of see what it looks like. 
Now that we've got that set, what we basically need to do is just give the tire a slow spin. And then we need to just wait now for this to settle. And what will happen is the heavy spot of the tire will sell, settle on the bottom. Okay, so now that our wheel has stopped, we know basically where our heavy spot is, you know, and that's essentially on the bottom center of the wheel. Now our valve stem is just off a little bit away from me. Um, so we know that our heavy spot's kind of here and essentially we want to attach our weight exact opposite of that. So in order to do that, first we're going to take our scraper and remove off any existing wheel weights and any existing residue that's there. Next, we're going to take some brake clean and just clean that off. And then additionally, the other thing I like to do is take one of the crayons, um, one of these yellow crayons and essentially mark that heavy spot on the rim just so we know exactly where it is as a kind of a point of reference. Also then as I swing over to the side here, so I know kind of where I'm attaching the weight, I have a visual reference point of where that heavy spot is. So again, first we're gonna go ahead and get this rim kind of cleaned off. So brake cleaner works really good for that and make sure that we don't have any residue or anything. And we wanna go ahead and get both sides cleaned. Okay, so now our painter's tape shouldn't have any trouble sticking to that rim. We're going to tear off a little piece. I'm going to go ahead and start with just two, two quarter ounce weights to start with. Start small, it's better to have less weight than more. So again, now we've got our crayon that I marked exact opposite, so that tells me I can put my weight right about here. Okay, so if your rim happens to be stubborn, even after you've cleaned it off with a brake cleaner, which does happen occasionally, you can just switch to duct tape. Now obviously duct tape can potentially leave a little bit of residue which you have to clean up after, but most of the time I've done this, painter's tape works pretty good, but this particular rim was giving me a little bit of grief, so I've gone ahead and switched to duct tape. So once we've kind of got that weight attached essentially exactly opposite of where that crayon is, you essentially want to put that at three and six, and then we basically want to go ahead and just let the wheel go. And we can see already that we don't have enough weight because the heavy spot of the rim is immediately going down. And so it's just gonna kind of go back and forth again. So we already know that we need to attach more weight. So easiest way to start with that is we did two quarter ounces kind of on the side closest to the camera. We're gonna go ahead and take two more quarter ounces and put them on the opposite side. So we're at a total of four. Okay, so a little bit better, but still not quite enough weight. We still have the valve stem in the spot that we marked going to the bottom. So we're gonna need a little bit more yet. Okay, so you can see that we've got it pretty much balanced out. You always want to err on the side of less weight than more weight, ideally. So you can see that we're pretty much, hopefully you can see kind of in the camera, more weight's kind of sitting here, our valve stem's over here. So we're pretty much balanced. You know, if I go down a little bit, it's gonna come right back up and balance out. So this is pretty much as good as you're gonna get, and this is kind of where we want to be. So now what we want to do is basically figure out how much weight we've got attached here and essentially balance it out across the wheel, because um, we probably have a little bit more on the one side right now. We want to try and even that out. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up. We've got the wheel weights attached to here and our tires balanced out. Hope you found this video helpful. Like, comment, and subscribe below, and I'll see you next time.